Hello, fresh from arriving in Las Vegas. How's it going? Yeah, really good. I'm getting adjusted to the time here and everything. Uh, well, a lot better than how I did in uh, in Shanghai. I remember the first couple of nights I didn't didn't sleep at all, but uh, contrary here, I'm, I'm I'm all good. I'm feeling fresh. Love that, love that. Yeah, you're properly getting the international treatment now, right? So you fight in UK, I think you did Italy, so you did the European thing, but obviously Shanghai uh, is going one way around the world. Now you're going the other way around the world. It's all good preparation for when you're fighting at the very top, right? Oh, of course. And even from an amateur, I've managed to, to get about and travel, so it, it all feels quite normal. Oh, good for you. Good for you. So who did you travel over stateside with? You, I guess you're going to give us a clue of who might be in your corner this weekend. Uh, well, my uh, brother Pav's here with us. And uh, I did manage to travel over with uh, Adam Bramble, who's on the Contender Show as well. So so at the moment, there's uh, Pav and Bram, and we're just, we're just hanging out at the moment. And, uh, you know, I had, had a good first day in, in Vegas as well. Uh, been, been watching... Been watching Pav get up to all sorts, really. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, you always, you, yeah, you always need that little bit of entertainment to make fight week go a little bit, a little bit quicker, right? Yeah, but say with uh, with with Bramald, he's he's not actually going to be in my corner. Pav's in my corner this time, but Carl's over in uh, PFL, so unfortunately he can't make it. But my uh, my good friend Munshir Kera is coming over. He'll be here on Wednesday and uh, he's going to be in the corner as well. That's awesome. Yeah, well, you obviously, last time we spoke, before your quarterfinal, we, we spoke about him, didn't we? And the, the link up, which I found was very interesting. So a lot of people, uh, I think just a, a little background to that. I met him over at Marcelo Garcia's. Uh, I had a little private because uh, he was such a stud in jiu-jitsu. But you, of course, have uh, closer ties to, to Manchester. And he's doing well himself, right? He's, I think after we spoke, he got a win or... Something like that. So he's on a hell of a win streak. Yeah, he's on a tear at the moment. Yeah, that's wicked. No, it's good to have people like that. I thought Cole was going to be able to make it across, but maybe maybe the travel plans didn't work out. What happened there? Yeah, well, on uh, there was a bit of a daft error on my part, seeing that it said the 24th on the poster. So me thinking that it would have been literally Saturday, but it's Friday and, and PFL's on Friday as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Easy, easy mistake to make. Easy mistake to make. Um, so listen, tell me, uh, how's things been since the quarterfinal? Obviously now you've shot to superstardom. You can't move in Manchester because you've been <laughs> win. Um, but yeah, how's, how's things been going since you, you got that win on the board and you're, you know, you, you're just another couple of steps away from getting your hands on a contract? Yeah, really good, man. Um, so with, with that actual fight from there, I've worked a lot on, uh, say... So some some areas which needed to improve it just from that fight which which Carl uh, just got us to work on really so some stuff from that fight which which could have been done better I've been working on that and uh, even for this one I've got more of a, a game plan for for Rule Penans as opposed to when when I was fighting uh, in Shanghai. Um, I just went out there just to have a scrap and didn't really game plan as much. Like I, just, f well, the game plan for that was just, just keep it standing and just scrap. Whereas this one's more against him being, uh, being a southpaw, and I've been doing a lot of rounds with Lewis McGrillan, who's a good crafty southpaw himself. And I just feel for the preparation for this one has been, uh, has been a lot. A lot higher, really, a lot, a lot more tailored to, to the guy I'm fighting, really, as opposed to just just training. Nice. Oh, that sounds interesting. Well, let, let's go back to the quarterfinal then, and obviously a very close fight. You got the yeah, split decision yeah. win, uh, which that must have had you and your team a little bit nervous when you're hearing the scorecards yeah, yeah. read out. Um, but like, what did you take from that overall performance? Well, there was. There were some things I did well. Like I, I thought my get ups were, were real good, and I managed to uh, get up with and not necessarily take any damage on the ground and just land the sh land shots on him to make him think, oh, he's, he's doing something here. And then I just managed to shoot up. So I, 
I, I like my get ups and just other little areas like stepping in a bit too much when uh, when I was throwing and you know say I'd say keeping keeping the fighter more at my range stuff like that. I've been I've been working on a little bit in the, in this camp. So how much do you think we saw of Kiru Singh Sahota in the quarterfinal compared to what you can actually bring to the table? Um, I feel like I I had a lot more to to showcase on on that night. You know, like, <laughs> Usman saying he was on twenty percent in it. Well, we'll go with something like that. You know. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, it's a big challenge, though, this, this tournament. Do you feel like there is there's anything different about the way that it's, it's a tournament format? I know there's a bit of time in between, but now you've been to Shanghai, you've seen the setup, you've maybe had a bit of feedback on the number of eyeballs and what it means to, like, the, the Asian MMA community trying to break through into the UFC. Has that added anything to the way that you're approaching this whole process? I mean, all that was factored in in the preparation for the last one, and like uh, I'd say, just it being in Vegas and like just it's like some of the stuff I've always like dreamed of fighting in Vegas, and and I'm kind of just living it now. So I'm just in the moment, taking it all in, and uh, yeah, just oh, also ready to weigh in. You know, like the cuts are a bit bit rough, but that's just part of the process. Yes, I can, I can only imagine, especially with the, the added issue with the travel, etc. But again, I'll go back to it. You know, it, it can't get much more difficult than that, right? It's, uh, it'll, it'll always be smoother sailing from here. But I am interested in how you're going to approach the whole I'm fighting in Vegas. Uh, and I don't want to sound like negative in any way here. It's just I've been around it a couple of times now and I've seen both sides. I, I saw, uh, I've seen like my teammate kind of get really excited and giddy about being in a place that he'd always dreamt of and literally taking it all in and then maybe not being so switched on when, you know, it's time to touch him up and get going. And then I've seen other people do a really great job by keeping the, like Jordan Vucenic, um, when he fought in Manchester, was just an absolute stud, the way that he was able to, uh, man, sorry, it was in Abu Dhabi, wasn't it? He was uh, yeah, yeah. just an absolute, so... So good the way that he was able to manage the whole process. I mean, tough fight, didn't get the result. But I don't think we that I wouldn't look into that too much. I just felt like he looked really comfortable. So it's it's kind of that that phrase we have in the UK, horses for courses. But do you think do you think you have to be aware of any of those elements of like pulling back on the excitement or the wow factor of the Vegas fight capital of the world? Or is that not really something that you guys have to worry about with your personality type? Um, well, if it was in one of the massive arenas, then I'd probably have to factor that in as much. But we're in the UFC Apex, which is going to be similar to uh, the the PI in in Shanghai. So in that sense, it's just like uh, you know similar, even like with the heat of Vegas compared to how China China was and and the venue. So I'd say if it was like a big stadium, then you know we'd have to factor that in, but not not so much with the Apex. Okay, well that's good. Yeah, that's good. Do you feel like the dream is getting closer now? I know some of the oh, semi-finals. Um, that, yeah, and, and how does that make you feel? It just motivates me like even more just to uh, just to perform and like I'm 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 gunning for this finish in this one. Like you know, with with the last one being uh, being close, uh, I'm I'm I'm. I'm I let me bang, bro. I'm, I'm ready, man. <laughs> Love it. Well, tell me a little bit about him then, because he's had, uh, you know, a, a bit of a, an interesting route through. Got a buy. I think he was ready to go, and there were some issues uh, with his opponent. So he, we haven't seen him perform at this kind of level. So there's a bit of an unknown from my perspective, someone who's looking to analyze the fight. But I'd like to get your take. I don't mean don't give away any secrets, but I'd love to get your take on what you think about this guy, this guy Ruel. Yeah, I mean, as you say, he hasn't performed on this level just to uh, just to his opponent not make him wait. He, he missed weight by loads that the Japanese fella. Um, yeah, but even just him not fighting on a stage such as this, I don't want to like underestimate him and his skills. And uh, from from his style and what I've seen from fights, he's 
he's more of a striker, but he'll he'll rush in on the takedowns and uh, you know, like like a southpaw, he he carries many traits of like you know just firing a bit more from his power side. So some of that is what I've been been training for. And um, what would you say would be like the, the perfect outcome then? You said you got the decision win. You've you've allowed the judges to uh, take a close look at your fight. This time I'm getting a sense you don't want it to go that way. But in terms of what the ultimate visualisation is, like how, how would you love to get it done? Uh, yeah, just like to spark him out. I'm saying second round. <laughs> second round knockout. Love it. Um, I want to get your take on something a little bit different as well. It's still very relevant to you and your career. UFC Manchester, close to home. You're, you're in the funnel now. You know, with the, the UFC contract is like arm's length away, another step after this, and maybe we'll talk about who you might think you might match up in the next round. But my experience of when the UFC come to town, it, it does create a little bit of a ripple effect. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too soon, but now that you were closer to it, like what have you experienced and what have you felt, seen, heard since the UFC came to town and had a big pay-per-view event in your home city? Yeah, just with, with us having... UK champions at the moment, you know, the UFC is coming to to the UK a lot more and cards like Manchester and London, these are like big dreams to, to get on on cards like that. Because there's one thing fighting in the UFC and like fighting all over, but fighting fighting in home, I mean that it'd be just something else really. And I would imagine you couldn't go to the fights because of course you're in camp and it was early morning. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, I was planning on I was planning on training in the morning, but training got cancelled that day, so I did manage to watch it all live. Um if I knew that before I probably would have gone down myself, but I did manage to catch it live, you know, with the with it being like at night and everything. No, it was I mean I was lucky enough to be there and it was obviously Leon didn't get the results, uh, but that aside, I think it was a very significant night for UK mixed martial arts. So I, of course, saw Lerone a couple of times as well, and I, I sort of felt a little bit sorry for Lerone. I know that his career is going great, and it was the right decision for him to take that main event fight, but I mean, I, I think he definitely would have added something a little bit special if he'd have managed to make the walk at home in Manchester as well. What do you reckon? Oh, that you know, we're just waiting for Lerone in Manchester, but. But beating Edson Barboza in the main event, I mean, you can't take anything away from that. And he's nah. he's he's got Dan Ige now on the on the Holloway card, which is massive, really. What what UFC is that? I know it's just a really good card from like from the start to finish. So just him being on that card has, has got me fired up as well. And of course, he's like Mr. Abu Dhabi as well, isn't he? He loves performing over there. Yeah, last time he was over there, it was that head kick knockout of uh, Makwan Amiyakani, right? Yeah, yeah. No, he's special. Like, what is, um, we might have spoken about this before, but what is the continued success of someone like Narone, who's, you know, under the same coaches, side by side on the mat? What does it do for a prospect like yourself? Oh, it's definitely a big, boosting morale for the whole team and uh, someone like Lerone is very technical so some of the he's like say I'm watching him in sparring just things like that we got someone you know top 15 ranked in the gym and not only just say training with him now we've been training with him at all powers from when he was something like a foreigner foreigner pro so it's kind of like someone who's been training alongside us since before I was even a, a professional myself, since I was an amateur, been on the same map as the guy. And it just, even just this generation of fighters that we got now, with Adam Bramall fighting on the Contender Series, that's someone who, uh, who I trained a, a lot with, like one of my main sparring partners for years, um, Louis Lee Scott. You know, he would have been fighting on the contender series if he wasn't defending his belt on on Aries, uh, another U UFC fight pass show. So, yeah. so he's going to get the call up soon. That like everyone in my generation of of fighters who I came up with are all on big things right now. So it's not just Lerone; it's like everyone around us on on the mats. Yeah, you make a really good point. I feel like 
your gym and Next Generation have got like about half a dozen guys and gals that are just waiting to break through. And it's uh, it's a very exciting time indeed for the sport, you guys individually as well. It's uh, And I'm very lucky to have popped my head in a couple of times at a few of the gyms to see everyone working. So yeah, the, the UK MMA future is in good hands. And, and with that, you know, you get past this fella, Ruel Pañales, this week puts you in a final. Like we've got Angut Bist, against Dong Hun Che. Now, how do you think that one's going to go? Have you got someone that you perhaps would prefer to face in the final? I know there might be some like nationalities and some rivalries at play there. To be fair, I, I, I want Ungood Bish to win and I feel like that's the matchup that everyone wants to see. Like an all India final, that's just, it's ludicrous really. Like, there's nothing, nothing like that has ever happened and that's kind of what I've seen all the Indian media people talk and that's what they want. Um, but whoever I get is going to be like, uh, well, it's a different, it's going to be a different matchup completely because Ungod's more of a wrestler and uh, the South Korean's more of a striker. So depending on who it is, it's going to be like a different approach to, to training for that one. But like, who I'd like to see win would be Ungood. And I've got a feeling that he is going to win. I feel like it's destined to be me and him in the final. So, so that, that's what I've got to say about that one. And what, what's the temperature like with the media over the potential of you guys fighting? Everyone's just fired up to see that matchup, really. Like, uh, uh, so they, uh, they just want that fight, really. That's the one there that, that everyone's everyone's they're kind of like overlooking the all the other competition and they, they just want it so so like I'm, I'm gonna do my part with with rule i want him to do his as well and i want to see the man in the final yeah that'd be really sad that's pretty historic for um you know with, with the whole asian indian mma thing that's uh that, that would be huge i'm sure so now well, let's see let's see how it all plays out um Thank you very much for your time. I will be over there. I'm on the mic again. Wouldn't miss it. I, I feel like I got close ties to the Road to UFC tournament. So uh, I, I'm very proud to be a small part of it. Just, you know, lending a few tones. So I'll be over on Friday. So I will see you there. Best of luck with the rest of the week. And uh, thank you very much for stopping by. All right. Nice one, John. We'll speak soon.